All right, folks, I'm back. And this time we're going to work on the layout and the setup of the table. This is very critical as a player and a game master that you learn how to do this. I actually learned this from uh, Digital Dave, or the, uh, or we also know him as Dave from uh, Fantasy Grounds Smiteworks. He now works for them. Uh, some of his earlier videos would cover these things, and they were very important. And at the time, I didn't realize how important they were until I started playing. So the first thing I do is if you are a game master and if you want to use the dice tower, which some people do, some people don't, it's in the options and you can turn that on or off. As a player, you don't have control of this, but I'm going to go ahead and show this so you understand what's happening. So the background decal, that can be changed if you have content or you can turn it off. I'll go ahead and leave the Smiteworks default logo. It's kind of cool. It's kind of got that burnt emblem dragon symbol. Um, the other thing is the dice tower. If you turn on the dice tower as just the host and you have no one connected to you, they, no one will notice that, that it's on. But if you want to see it yourself as the game master, you want to turn that on. And now it will appear on the bottom right corner. So what I'm going to do with this table set up here is get it ready for character creation or for playing. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click in this chat box and I'm going to click this little eraser symbol and that'll clear all the text out. Secondly, I'm going to right click and unlock it and you can move it around from the bottom right corner and it will manipulate it. And if you actually, um, you can, um, what I'm doing now is I'm kind of cent recentering this and kind of shrinking it a little bit because it doesn't need to necessarily be that tall. And then I'm going to right click on the dice tower and drag that, and drop it right under here. So I have a nice even lineup here. And then I'm going to right click and lock that and the dice tower so they can no longer move. If you want to change the color of your dice, you go up to the top right corner where all the buttons are. You'll see a color palette and you can start manipulating the colors as you see fit. So it just depends on your taste. I kind of like blue, so I kind of stick with that. Uh, if you like other colors, that's fine, but uh, you can change your colors from up there. The next thing is the combat tracker. So you always want to have this up if you can help it. And I always have it sitting here, kind of layered above the chat window. And when players connect to the table or when you are on a table, they'll, you'll show up here. And then the game master will put your character on the combat track, hopefully. And then the next thing is I'm actually going to pull up a character sheet. So I'm going to go to this PC banner up here. And I'm going to go ahead and click this green plus button. And that opens up a new sheet. So technically, uh, when you're building a character, you kind of want to have it stretched out so that you can see everything. And generally, as far as placement goes when I'm actually playing, I will have this character sheet stretched all the way out so that I can see everything. And as we build the character, it'll get a lot more robust with information, especially back here on the Actions tab. So on the right-hand side of your character sheet, you have different tabs. You have all these different fields. These are where we're going to start editing your character. There is a specific order to building a character. And we're going to get into that into the next part of the video. But I want to show you a couple other things in the interface. So when you want to drag and drop a dice roll, you pick the dice up and you can drop it in, this, in the chat window. It'll record the result. If you want to drop it in the dice tower, if you're told to do so, when you drop this in there, that's supposed to be a hidden roll and only the game master can see that. So that's what that means. Um, if you have to roll with advantage, you can click this ADV button on the bottom left underneath the chat window. And when you roll, it'll automatically roll two dice and keep the best of two rolls. If you roll with disadvantage, which happens from time to time, it does the same thing but reverse. Now this time it keeps the lower of the two rolls. If for some reason you need a modifier, let's say a plus or minus two, Let's say you're shooting through cover or your enemy is partially hidden. It will take that roll in consideration and subtract the difference. 
if you have a random modifier, maybe you get a bless from, or not a bless, but a um, a bardic inspiration given to you. So what you would do is you have a d6 to work with. So you would just drag and drop the d6, depending on the bard level, of course. I think it goes up to a d8 when you get higher level. You drag this result into the modifier box. Now, whatever you do, if you do a roll or a saving throw or whatever, you'll get your inspiration. So in this case, I'm just going to do a regular roll. And there's a 15, so it was 5 plus 10. So that's where you put your modifiers. So these are just some of your base modifiers. And then there's your dice tower for hidden rolls. Now, another nice thing about Fantasy Grounds is you can set up shortcuts, and we'll discuss that in the next video. But you can actually drag the initiative rolls and some of your other skills and such down to these hotkeys. It really makes things nice and, and flexible. Uh, when your DM puts you on the combat tracker, you'll show up on here. And when it's time to pass your turn or when you're asked to, to advance, you're going to push this little down arrow. So the down arrow will skip to the next actor or to the next NPC, depending on who's after you. Um, in order to make this a little smoother, you can actually drag that down arrow key and you can drop it like underneath your character sheet. So when it's your turn, instead of reaching all the way over there, you can actually drop down here and click the down button and it will advance your turn. So this is just some little fancy shortcut tips. But again, you have your main tab up here. On the very top is your portrait. On the very right is your token. And if you don't have a token, then your portrait becomes your default token. So don't worry too much about that. You have your skills tab, abilities tab, inventory tab, notes, uh, adventures league log, and actions. So those are basically the, the main uh, sections of the character sheet. As far as player um, access, you do have access to the library but you only have access to the ones that are shared to you, which will show up in this library on the left. Also, um, in the character sheets, um, you can claim any open character when you join a table as a player, but the DM has the ultimate say, so whatever characters he has available, he'll let you know if you can have it or not. He can also take ownership of it so no one else does temporarily. He can also export or import characters, so it just depends on on what the situation is. So I'm gonna, we're gonna call this guy Testy. Testy McTest. So this will be our character's name. And when I come back for the next video, we'll actually start building. We'll go over page one of this uh, character sheet. So until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.